Good evening. Uh, sorry I couldn't have my coffee today. Um, I've already had enough coffee today, but uh, either way, hi, I'm back again. Sorry I haven't been uploading much. I've been a bit busy. Today I'm going to be reviewing the, the classic EC2B Divina Pink. This is the one with, I think, the 3360 in it. Um, so no spin outs or anything. Just uh, uh, before I get started into the review, I just wanted to clarify that I actually did buy this used and it was quite heavily used off that. So uh, take everything with a grain of salt, especially the coating as well as the side buttons because um, I'll get into it when I, when I mention it, but the coating when I got it, it was completely sanded down to be matte and it also did not have a matte coating added to it. Uh, I then added my own glossy coating to it to try and mimic the original Lazawi gloss, but obviously it's not gonna be a one-to-one -one replica. Starting off with the shape, this is the OG Ergo shape that basically every company, OEM especially, would come to replicate over the coming like years or so. Especially from uh, people like uh, G-Wolves and Pulsar, those are some notable ones. Yeah, this, is, this and the Death Adder I would say are the most notable Ergos out there with the Intellimouse shape coming in a close second since this is technically a clone of the Intellimouse shape, but not quite, it's a little bit different. Even though this is the smaller version in the EC line, it's still a bit big and it's more of a medium to large mouse. There's a slight curve inwards here on the right hand side, on the right side, uh, which feels just perfect with the way I hold it on 131. It curves heavily outwards towards the back of the mouse, so like that. So it feels quite comfortable when I have that kind of claw palm kind of grip sometimes. Very slight comfort grooves in the buttons, which allow for uh, many different types of grips. Uh, it doesn't discriminate on any type of grip in particular. It's not too over the top, but it's also not flat. It's got quite a tall center hump, which allows for a really comfortable claw ergo mouse. There's a tilt on the mouse as well. As you can see, the left hand side is a little bit higher than the right hand side. This allows for a little bit of a tilt grip as they would call it. And it's really comfortable because it causes less strain on your wrist when flicking around like that, especially if you're a wrist aimer. All right, as for the coating, I bought this used on Mouse Market and it came sanded down with no matte coating on it. I proceeded to apply a clear coat glossy coating coming out with a decent glossy coating, but not a one-to-one -one copy of the stock mouse. Because of this, take what I say with a grain of salt. Gloss actually made me sweat less than most matte coatings and would probably, and would, you know, obviously last longer than uh, a matte coating because those would wear down and then become glossy in the areas I used it most. My biggest issue would be the grime and oils that dirty the coating up. Like it would, you would be able to visibly see where your fingers were, were from all of like the grime and the sweat that would build up on it. But it's easily cleaned up with a microfiber cloth. I would recommend cleaning any glossy mouse probably uh, at the end of the day after you've, after your gaming session, just wipe it down with a microfiber cloth. Uh, the coating wasn't slippery for me at all, unless my hands were dirty, you know, oily. Uh, the back hump also never caused much sweat in my sweaty hands, so I think I'm more of a glossy coating type of person. I'm definitely getting an XM1 soon, so I think I'm gonna try and get the glossy one. So for the build, there's obviously the infamous, well not infamous, but just the famous Zowie build quality. It's just absolutely built like a tank, will last you literally years um, as long as you take care of it. Uh, the mouse came grimy, dirty, messed up feet, and a grimy scroll wheel. Despite that, after fixing it up and replacing the feet, cleaning the little nooks and crannies, the little corners and stuff, um, and adjusting the side buttons to make sure that they felt more new, it felt much better. There is unfortunately like a, a just a just a general kind of mishap with the side buttons where the side buttons take just an absurd amount of pre-travel to click as well as they're already pushed in quite far into the mouse so you have to push in a little bit past where the edges are to actually activate the side buttons which uh, make the side buttons pretty unpleasant to use I don't use side buttons but if you do keep that in mind there's no side play in the main clicks. You can see it like this, but when actually clicking down, I can't really move it around that much, nor can I really feel it. Side buttons, as I said, designed pretty badly. Uh, zero creak or flex at all. Pretty expected at a 92 gram mouse, even though it is medium to large. And I feel like it is quite evenly balanced, a little bit more to the back, but still generally in the middle. 
All right, so for the clicks, they're these really high quality Huano clicks with a bit of pre-travel that Zowie designed in order to tap click easily on TAC FPS games like CSGO and Valorant. Uh, not much post-travel though, but definitely you can definitely feel a little bit of a, a pre-travel to it. Clicks feel a bit bouncy, but not very mushy. Uh, the scroll wheel feels totally different from other scroll, scroll wheels nowadays. It feels a lot lighter with less steps, but it's much louder as you can hear. While I'm at it, let me do a click test. Left click, right click, middle click, scroll, and then the side buttons. Lastly, the cable it came with was a the classic gray rubber cable that it come that Zowie mice come with or the Davina mice come with. And it's really stiff, but if you put it in a taller bungee, if you if you raise the bungee a little bit, uh, I've noticed that it literally doesn't touch the mouse pad and it's pretty agile. So if you don't want to get a paracord, you can always just raise your bungee a little bit um, to help out with that. But all in all, I'd give this mouse a solid 9 out of 10. This is a classic super durable mouse that I recommend for plenty of esports gamers if you're traveling a lot just throwing it in your bag even though I feel like it's a little bit overvalued by Zowie I definitely think they should lower the price at least a little bit especially because of the really bad side buttons as well as you know it's a little bit heavy it's it's on the heavier side for a mouse design like this even though it is built really well if you need a reliable mouse and like the shape, this mouse will last you years and is really easy to modify. The only downsides are obviously the side buttons and the heavier weight, but the mouse has such a good reputation for a reason. But yeah, that's my review. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, share this video, follow me on Twitter. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.